Well, we're here with Wayne Foschholz from the Padlock Ranch in Wyoming. And uh, Padlock is a large ranch with um, a, lot of, a lot of land spread out over some, some country that uh, is probably fairly demanding on, uh, on the, the cow herd. And Wayne's here in Colorado shopping for some bulls. And Wayne, I wanted to talk with you a little bit about some of your, your breeding program there, some of the, the strategies and, and goals that you have in, uh, in your genetic selection, both in, in bulls and in your, within your cow herd. Well, we use uh, composite breeding uh, and have been for a number of years. And uh, we feel like that gives us the uh, opportunity to experience all the hybrid vigor we can get and it's consistent. And it's uh, really important for us to supply a uh, uniform quality product, whether we're selling to folks uh, individual animals or whether we're going clear through to retail, which we do some of. We also are looking for uh, animals that, uh, on the maternal side, they have to be uh, very efficient and be able to uh, stay out uh, year-round is our goal. Uh, so these cattle uh, that we want to, to maintain uh, in our herds have to be uh, uh, designed in a manner that they uh, can get through without losing a lot of weight and uh, breed back. And uh, of course, it's all about reproductive efficiency and as far as affecting the bottom line. So we got to get that done. And I understand that you've done a lot of work there in, in heifer development in really trying to bring those costs down and, uh, and use some you know, low input systems and so I, I'm sure that genetics come into play there as to the type of heifers that'll that'll do well in that program as well as just a, a good system for identifying the heifers that the individual heifers that uh, that'll fit that program to, to keep on the ranch. Yeah we're our goal there with the heifers too is to uh, be able to wean and then uh, uh, winter out uh, with those uh, calves and uh, with just some protein supplement and then come back in and uh, the, uh, hit some better pastures uh, in the early spring and early summer and be ready about the 10th or 15th of July to breed. So we breed just a little bit later than maybe the average in our area, but we want to calve about to the last week of April, the first week of May, and try to be in a situation where they're uh, calving really close to green grass. And you keep some of those calves over as, as yearlings as I understand and, and I know that you work with the uh, country natural program with a, at least some of the some of the cattle is you have kind of very different marketing uh, strategies for for different groups or, or just kind of flexible as to what the what the market offers each year well once you get in a program you're not really flexible after that <laughs> for a while you know uh, uh, we do uh, sell uh, a portion of our cattle with country natural beef and uh, that's worked well for us. We also have a uh, program with Meyer where we uh, feed some cattle on our place and uh, sell directly to Meyer uh, and go in and out and then uh, we also uh, do a uh, two other types of sales that uh, where we would have some natural or uh, non-hormone treated uh, cattle that uh, would be on the open market as, as yearlings. Uh, and then we have some that uh, uh, may have had one shot in their life or whatever, but they don't qualify mm -hmm. for natural. And so they're generic and they sometimes we'll feed those and sometimes we sell them.